Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? This episode is brought to you by the Build Your Own Personal Brand Program. I launched a four-week personal branding program back in May, and it sold out in less than a week. A lot of you reached out. You wanted to know if I was going to offer it again, and guess what? I am. It's a four-week program where not only do I teach you how to set up your personal brand, but I hold you accountable, and I give you all the steps you need to take to make sure that personal brand is alive and kicking. This course is perfect for people who are looking for a new job, want to build an audience for a side hustle or project, or just want to better understand who they are and what their value is. We'll do everything like taking inventory on yourself, building your story and your elevator pitch, getting you a really awesome website, resume, cover letter, and also figuring out how you can take your value and spread it to the world. If you want to know more about this program, head to jenglance.com, click on the personal branding program, and you can sign up for round two, launching ASAP. Hey, hey, any youngers. Welcome back to another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. It's me, your host, Jen Glantz. Welcome to the month of November. We have less than 60 days left of this year, of 2020. I'm a big person who likes to look back on years and think about two to three memories of those years, what stood out the most. And I know for a lot of us, pretty much everyone probably listening to this show, this 2020 will be will be remembered for not the best things. Like you're going to look back on 2020 and say, it was the year I lost my job. It was the year I took a salary cut. It was the year where my plans got canceled. It was the year where my friend got really sick with a virus that was just so unknown and scary. It was the year where just everything went up in flames, was a complete dumpster fire. I want to think, I want to push, I want to help you to think about a way that you could end this year, these final 60 days on a good note so that when you look back at 2020, you can say, yeah, it was horrible for so many reasons, but here's the one good thing that came from it. So I'm just a big believer in welcoming you to the final 60 days of this year and trying to push you to think about, okay, what's a goal, what's an activity, what's a hobby, what's a side hustle that you can get in motion now so that when you do look back in years to come and recount on 2020, you have that positive experience, that positive moment that good thing you started to do for yourself. Goals don't have to be finished by 60 days, but at least you can put something in motion now that you can eventually look back on and say, you know what, I'm glad I did something great in the year 2020. But this week's episode is a solo episode from me about something that I have been doing for the past month. It's interesting because ever since the pandemic started, I have found myself spending quality time thinking about people I have not thought about in years. You know those people you sometimes see on social media or just sometimes cross your mind because of random memories that pop up or you see a store or you smell a scent or you listen to a song and these people just cross your mind and you think about, okay, you know, maybe I'll reach out to them eventually or maybe they'll pop into my life eventually later on, but they never really do and the thought passes. And then sometimes you find yourself facing regret that you didn't reach out and say hello. Well, I have found that I have been daydreaming about the most random people. Like I daydreamed about a friend from high school that I haven't had words with in 12 years. I LinkedIn stalked an old coworker I used to spend 12 hours a day with and haven't seen in years. I even opened up an old middle school yearbook and played a solo game of where are these people now, which was both fascinating and the greatest way to waste a rainy Sunday afternoon. And after a while of thinking and wondering and looking at these people on social media, trying to pick to piece together what's going on in their lives, I pressed the pause button on it all. I thought to myself, Jen, why don't you just reach out and say hello when you think about a person? 
sure, after 12 years, 10 years, two years, it might feel random and odd, but if the person crosses your mind, why not extend that friendly hello? So this is the rule that I put into place for the month of October, and I have to say that it was awkward sometimes, but also really really awesome at other times. There was moments during this month experiment where I found myself super proud that I was able to muster up the courage to say hello to old friends or coworkers or just people in my life. And I also felt a, a great surge of joy making genuine connections. So I promised myself in the month of October, every time I thought about a person and wondered how they were doing, I would send an email, a text, or I would just pick up the phone and call them. Now, sometimes the people did not answer. Other times they did. And I've even become email pen pals with a few. I've sat on the phone with hours with others. And what stopped me from doing this sooner was fear. Fear around what I was going to say to them. Fear around, you know, I didn't want to be that person who just sent a generic, hey, how are you message. Fear around not being able to establish a meaningful conversation with the person and it falling flat and it being more awkward than just not reaching out to them before. So I usually formatted my communication via email in a four paragraph essay kind of way. And I'm going to share it with you here. And this is a great episode to just store, to keep with you, to take notes during, because I honestly found that separating my message into four parts, these four paragraphs, made it just really easy to be able to send these emails when I thought about people without hesitation, without second guessing, and without a fear of wondering what I should say. So in paragraph one, I said hello, and then I referenced a memory that stuck in my head about them, something I remember about them. I even referenced what made me think about them or just our general time together. So paragraph one was more than, hey, how are you? It was, hey, I know it's been a while, but I was thinking about you this week and what made me think about them. So I'll give you an example. I wrote this to a person. I said, hey, I know it's been a while, but I've been thinking about you this week. I was visiting my parents in Florida and I drove by some of the spots that we hung out in in high school. Do you remember the time that we and that I talked about a specific memory? And I said, it still makes me laugh. So that's your first part, just a reference as to why you're reaching out, what made you think of them, just something small, something easy to say hello. Now, paragraph two or part two is a question about what they are up to, maybe asking for an update on something that they said they were doing or that you saw on social media or just a genuine ask about how they are. So I'll tell you an example of what I wrote in my email. I said, the last time we spoke, you said you were moving to Minnesota to go to law school. What's the latest? I know this year has been funky, but is there anything else making you extra happy? So that was my way of basically saying like, what's going on? What's new? How are you? Without just a genuine question, without just a generic question that usually gets a, I'm doing okay answer. I wanted to ask specific questions that would allow that person to open up if they wanted to, that really showed that I was truly thinking about them and wanted to really know how they were in a genuine way. Paragraph three or part three is an update on how you are. Specific details so it makes it easier for them to have content to say back to you when they follow up. So I wrote in my email, as for me, I've been hunkering down in Brooklyn. My fiance and I have gotten creative with turning our tiny apartment into a jungle gym for our hobbies and activities. We even got a dog. I'm spending my free time writing and it makes me happy just like I did as a teenager when you and I first met. So again, in that paragraph, you're sharing a brief update on how you are, not too much detail, but enough so that if they wanted to respond and touch on something, they could. For example, this person could write me back and say, oh, you got a dog. How's it been, you know, with a puppy in the house kind of thing to continue the conversation. Now, paragraph four is the tricky part. That's the wrap up. That's where you say what you truly want next from them. Rather than saying, I hope we talk again soon, be intentional and honest about it. Say, I would really like to talk on the phone. Are you free next Tuesday or Sunday? Or if you don't want to continue the conversation with one of those phone calls or in-person meetings, you just simply wanted to say hi and sort of leave it as that, you can say something like, it was great reliving our memories in my head. I hope to hear from you soon. And I do hope that you're well. So that's a very clear indication of, look, you know, I'm not necessarily looking to jump on a four-hour phone call with you, but I just wanted to let you know you crossed my mind. That's okay too. So instead of ending it with something that you don't mean, end it with something intentional. 
So that's the four parts. Part one is hello, what made you think about them? Part two is a question or a couple of questions for them that are specific. Part three is an update on your life. And part four is a wrap up with what you want next or what you're, you know, just letting them know you're thinking about them. Try not to ask anything directly from them like, hey, I know you went to law school. Do you mind sending me your, you know, the essays that you wrote? Like, don't ask for anything business or even just anything from them. Just keep this super simple. The point of this email, again, is just to let them know that you are thinking about them. And then if you truly do want to continue the conversation, letting them know how you'd like to do that. So again, I've been doing this for the month of October. I have found it really powerful and personal. And sometimes people don't write back, other times they do. And it's been a great way of just reconnecting with people in my life that I just lost touch with for who knows what reason. You know, we all we all do that. But I just know that I've been super nostalgic during the pandemic and I've been thinking about so many people and so many things. And this has been super helpful. So I hope you give it a try if you do or you don't. But coming out with us in the secret, you're not getting any younger Facebook group. Let us know how it's going. People in there have been talking about real situations where they followed this method. They've done the same thing. And some of them have really awesome stories. Some of them have stories that went the wrong direction and they share how and why. And maybe it's good to check those out as well. So come hang out with us in the secret. You're not getting any younger Facebook group. I hope you enjoyed this episode and back next week with another new one. Hey, you. Thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen too. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.